Good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. I want to let you know a couple of things. One, this webinar is recorded, and so we'll share the recording afterwards. And then two, in the chat section, there is a place for you to send some messages. If you have any questions at all during the webinar, shoot me a message there, and I'll try my best to address um, those questions during the webinar itself. With that, we'll get started. My name is Hai. I'm co-founder of Affluence. Um, over the years, I've talked to thousands of customers. And one of the things that um, I want to make sure you understand today is the goals. One, help you understand the basics of Protomatrix, provide a framework for you to get the most out of Protomatrix with the least amount of work, and then help you envision what work and life success uh, might look like with Protomatrix. Hopefully, the reason here that you're here is because you're looking for a way to be more effective at prioritization of both your task as well as emails. Uh, and so we'll talk about all of those capabilities. The question I always like to ask is, are you focused on work with the most impact? Um, it's a really, really interesting question because every single day we're spending so much time um, doing all sorts of stuff, right? But the question always remains, are those the things that actually is most impactful towards my work? Um, in fact, over, myself personally, over the last several weeks, I've been so much more productive than usual once I start realizing what my, spending more time thinking about my priorities and thinking of how I can further my goals. Nevertheless, one of the things that we do is, um, you know, we talk to customers about challenges and there's three recurring challenges that I see all the time at least. The first is that team members struggle to understand what's priority right now. Now, I understand that, you know, you as an individual contributor within an organization, you always have a lot of things that you have to work on. But then at the same time, other people are also working on their priorities and their task. And there's always conflict. There tend to be conflict around um, the priorities mismatch across the organization. And so when we talk about team members have trouble understanding what's priority right now, it's because of a communication issue and you're not able to talk to others and understand where they're at with respect to the priorities. And then the corollary to that is actually it becomes harder to keep track on the status of work across all these areas of responsibilities. We no longer have one set of tasks. We have so many things going on at the same time. So understanding where things are um, and how it's progressing, especially when someone else doing it, is extremely important. And then the last aspect of it is that emails and meetings are just causing far too much context switching. Um, ironically, I feel like over the last couple of years, you know, communication software have really advanced. We're talking about Teams, Slack, and 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 all that. Um, but what happens is that we're just getting overwhelmed, and so we're getting pinged with messages over and over again. And then the truly most important emails. Um, or the truly most important messages are actually lost. So what is part of Matrix? Um, per, just in case you're not aware, if you're signing up for this webinar and then not realizing what part of Matrix is, it's a comprehensive email priority and project management software to help teams manage emails, conduct efficient meeting, and get real-time status updates of projects and priorities. So part of Matrix brings all of those areas together into one central place. Um, a question I tend to get is, does Part of Matrix work for individual? And the answer is yes. In fact, Part of Matrix started as a software for individuals to manage pr their priorities. And then over time, one of the things we re realize is that, wait a minute, if I can manage my priorities well, and then I can share that priorities um, with others, then it's more than one plus one. One plus one is three, not two, right? So that's the um, advancements of part of, me, part of Matrix. And so I want to make sure that you understand that, you know, at the end of the day, it starts at the individual. It starts at, at the personal level. Um, and I feel like that's the most important thing to recognize about Part of Matrix itself. So how does Part of Matrix help with those three challenges that I talked about? First, we use what's called the four quadrant methodology to promote effective prioritization. I'll go into that in more details. Um, secondly, Purdue Matrix provide different views, such as what we, I call the one-on-one, -on -one, the agenda, the timeline, to help you understand what needs to be done within the right context. And then uh, finally, Purdue Matrix provide really deep integrations into the system you already use, including Microsoft Teams and Outlook for effective email and task prioritization. So I would argue that um, where Purdue Matrix shines is our ability to actually 
help you bring all of these elements together into one central place. And so being able to understand what you need to work on means you have to understand what are all the things you could work on. So what makes Party Matrix different from so many other software? Now, I imagine the vast majority of you who are here today and, and listening to this webinar um, afterwards, you already have gone through so many tools. I, I know there are a thousand, uh, I'm not exaggerating, I'm pretty sure, a thousand task and project management software. Um, so what happens is that um, the vast majority of them help you manage tasks, but what they don't help you do is understand priorities. And so a couple of other things that makes Part of Matrix different, it's a Microsoft 365 security certified solution um, and across all web uh, teams and Outlook app. And then one of the things I'm really excited about is that we're leveraging AI to help you achieve your goals. Um, and so I'll try to show that capability today as well. And then also Party Matrix provide what I call people-centric collaboration. So we kind of flip the model of a project management software where you're managing project with the task inside. Now you flip it and you think, wait a minute, um, when I'm working on something, who am I working on? Who am I doing this for? Is it for my manager? Is it for my customer, for my clients? Um, for myself, et cetera. And so that what, that's what people-centric collaboration means. And then finally, Proto Matrix is available as a SaaS solution, which is what we'll talk about today, as well as a HIPAA compliance for healthcare life sciences, as well as an Azure government cloud for state and local governments. Um, if you're interested in those other solutions or our um, enterprise solution, definitely reach out to us. So let's talk about the basics, the fundamentals behind Proto Matrix. There's a famous quote attributed to former President Eisenhower, what is important is seldom urgent and what is urgent is seldom important. What I really like about this quote is it breaks everything that we have to do into the two dimensions of importance and urgency, right? Whenever we say we have something to do, is it because it's urgent, because you have to get it done now, or is it because it's important? And so if you were to go and take everything you have to do and you put it into a list, well, does that list adequately capture importance and urgency? Um, did the first item you write down happen to be the most important and the most urgent, or is it just whatever came to your mind? And so one of the exercises I really like to ask customers to do um, is one, write down everything you have to do, right? All the stuff that's on your mind, all the stuff that's on your to-do list. And then second, start looking at them and determining where do I start first? And so the way the Proto Matrix works is instead of having this linear list, you break it into a quadrant, into these four quadrants. The quadrant one, the do now, that's the equivalent to importance and urgent. Um, and then the quadrant two are the important but not urgent. And so that's what I can start planning for. And then what are the things that I can delegate to others? Um, and what I mean by delegate, even if you don't have a direct report, you can think of delegation as a place where you can actually get someone else to do it instead. And that could be a third party, um, that could be a, another business, et cetera. And so delegation is just a way to actually take it off your plate. And so ensuring that you know, you're actually focused on those top two. And then instead of looking at anything that's not important, not urgent, if you do have any of those things, get rid of them, right? Declutter right away. So instead use quadrant four as what, as what I call the inbox, which is where you sort of get started. And so if you don't know where something belongs yet, you put it into the inbox, and then you prioritize as appropriate. Now, this is the part that's really interesting. When you have taken that list of yours and you put into the items into this, this four, uh, these four quadrants, my challenge to you is do not have everything in quadrant one. If you have more than 25%, that means maybe you have to reprioritize a little bit. And if you have, if everything, you know, there's a, a saying that if everything's important and urgent, then nothing is important and urgent, right? And so put that in your mind as well as you're doing these prioritization. The next part of the exercise is now that you've done this um, and put all your action items into this quadrant, walk around the office and start comparing notes. And this is where it's, to me, it's the most exciting part. Because if your manager does the same thing and your direct reports do the exact same thing, do you think you'll see alignment? Imagine if you go and you talk about, you know, a really critical project and you said, you know what, this project, we have to work on this. We have to work on this now. Um, you know, the due date is is tomorrow um, and we, this cannot be be delayed. And imagine if your manager didn't feel the same way or your direct reports um, don't feel the same way. Then that's where you have that really good exercise 
of talking it through and reprioritizing the and and look at it for the bigger picture. So one thing that's really interesting about using the Eisenhower matrix that I just showed to prioritize is that it creates alignment from the very beginning. It is extremely difficult. I'm not going to lie about that part. Um, that's the one thing that I cannot emphasize enough even, that if you have to put tasks into the, the matrix, it is hard because people just love to put their list and then, you know, afterwards they don't realize where it all belongs. And so that's why, I, that's why that exercise is particularly useful. And success from using per matrix isn't about finding what everyone agrees on. It's about discovering disagreement. If you walk around the office and everyone across your whole organization is completely aligned on priorities, you're set. You don't need our software. In fact, you know, you're the um, unicorn out there in terms of being able to understand what you have to work on. But my argument is that when you do find that disagreement and you start reprioritizing, that means you've extracted value out of per matrix. So keep that in your mind as well. So to, to re-emphasize all of this, Party Matrix at the end of the day is a communication software. So don't think of it as something that's that's a chore to do. Think of it as a way to communicate what's in your brain um, and put that down into priorities. And then at the same time, get a, a peek into your teammates' priorities. So that's what you should look at Party Matrix as. As mentioned, uh, the webinar is recorded and we'll post it into affluence.com slash webinars. And with that, I'm going to jump into the demo itself. All right, so I have the party matrix open here. Um, one of the things I want to show you is when I open up party matrix, this is the web app here, and I'm going to go ahead and go to my personal priorities project here. So on the left hand side are my projects, right? These are my different areas of responsibilities. And then in the middle is the four quadrants, everything that I've just talked about so far. You see the do now, the do later, the delegate, and then here I call it postpone. So, and whenever I create a task in Pro Matrix, I have to create a task within this framework. So I can't put it in the list, I have to decide where it goes. And creating a task in Pro Matrix is extremely easy. So for example, so you have one here that's called a webinar participant. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do create a new task. Let's say um, do some competitors research. OK, so that's an example of how I can create a task in Party Matrix. But the next thing I can do is actually instead of actually just creating that task, I can say do in one week. So Party Matrix uses what's called natural language to take any task um, that you have and words such as do in one week and automatically set the due date for you. So you see the due date is set for me and I don't have to manually do it. One of the things that I highly recommend that anyone who uses Part of Matrix do is always set due date. So if we talk about the dimensions of importance and urgency, if you don't have dates on them, then you're not going to understand when you should work on them. Um, and so even if the dates change, that's perfectly OK. Just set some sort of dates. Now that I've created a task, on the right hand side, I have what's called my item details. And the way item details works, you can think of it as metadata that you can attach to a task to give you more context, right? So first, there's a task in my personal priorities project. I can start this task. Maybe that's because it's really important. I can add an icon to this task. Um, and then I can go down here and I see owner. So when I create a task, it defaults to me. But I can go and actually delegate this to other people. And so that I could change the owner. And there can only be one owner for any task. And then after, next to that is progress, zero to 100%. Um, and then you have the due dates, right? As, as you saw earlier, I set the due dates. But then there's also reminder. And actually, I want to um, talk about the difference here. Imagine if you have something to do that takes two days to, to get done. If you set the due dates in a week, and then that, you know, a week later you get started, you're not going to get that done in time. So reminder is a way for you to actually get notification to get started earlier. One of the things I like to do is I always set uh, uh, a due date and then I set a reminder several days before it. And then also um, what I can do is I can actually set recurring reminders as well. So, for example, right here, I have a, again the task that's due in October 10th. And then again, I'm going to use our natural language system to say, remind me daily. So what this is going to do is Party Matrix will send me a daily reminder um, so then I can bring this to the top of my list so I know that, hey, this is something I need to work on. 
And so below that, you have the chat section. So the chat section is where I interface with Protomatrix using natural language. At the same time, it's a place where you can go and um, talk to your coworkers as well. So because this task is just for me, this is just my record. But if when I delegate this action item to another person, then that person and I can actually have a conversation in here. And then you know we can talk about things like status updates, et cetera, and it all gets recorded in the chat section. And then next to that, you have the notes. And so when you go to notes, it's where you can add additional metadata around the task itself. This is where you can add subtask. Um, this is where you can add information that others might need to look at in order to understand um, more information about the task. And then after that, you have resources. In resources, that's where you can attach files, you can attach links. One of the things that's really helpful with Protomatrix is the ability to incorporate email into your task. So what that means is when you create a task, you can actually attach an email to it and say, could you respond to this email um, in a week or, or in a month, et cetera. So that at a high level are, um, is the metadata around your task. And so now let's take a look at the project itself. So as you can see on the left-hand side, my list of projects, what I can do is actually, I can go and customize my project here. I can go click on edit and it actually opens up my project. And now I have set of item details, I have my project details. Within my project details, I can customize the name of my project. And if I star it, then it goes to the top of my list. And then below that, I have the four quadrants. One thing that's really um, useful here is that you can customize the name of the quadrants themselves, as well as the color. The reason we like to do that is because over time, as you use Protomatrix, one of the things you'll learn is that there's certain terminology that's really reflective of how you and your organization work. Some people like to write this as important and urgent. Um, others like the do now. Um, others like uh, using other dimensions such as effort and impact, et cetera. So if you have different needs, you can actually customize that. And so once you start using Protomatrix more and more, you'll find that maybe you don't have a delegate section, and instead you can use this as a section for resources or documentation. And so then when someone's looking at this project, they can actually use the quadrants as a way to um, see everything that's, in, that's important around the task within that project. So let me show you how to create a project. So if you want to create a project, you go to click on project here and create project. So when you go and create a project, you have several options. The first is you can always create a blank project. So with a blank project, what I can do is I can just name the project and then click create. And that's very, very easy and to get started. You can just choose a color theme, et cetera. And then you have a couple of basic templates that you can choose from. The basic part of matrix is what you saw, but also we actually have several other uh, template that you can choose. Now, some of you might recognize, you know, the Eisenhower matrix, the SWOT analysis, um, retroactive project analysis. All that boils down to is terminology, right? And so that goes and updates the names of the quadrants to reflect those different methodology. So that gives part of matrix a, that makes part of matrix a very flexible tool for more than just managing the tasks that you have today. But when you go back to the create project list, um, you also have several other options. So, for example, you're able to choose from what we, I call our public templates. These are templates we've created um, over the years that not just include the quadrant names, but also tasks in them. Um, again, just to get you started um, based on some of the learnings that we've had in the past. You can also save any project as a template. Let me give you a use case. Imagine if your organization has a client onboarding process. Within that client onboarding process, you have a list of priorities, you have the tasks in quadrant one, two, three, four, uh, and then within those, you have various due dates and so forth. What you can do is you can save that project as a template. The reason you wanna do that is then the next time you onboard a customer, you simply choose from that template and you choose the start date and then all those due dates get created and propagated out for you. Very, very helpful way to save you a ton of time, especially if you have recurring projects. So that's what you see in the My Template. So you can see here, for example, I have a process template, an employee onboarding template, et cetera. So you can let your imagination run wild here with respect to the kind of templates that you can create and share within your team. Finally, there's an option to create with AI. So the way Creative AI works is we take a goal that you have and we help you come up with the appropriate action items for you to achieve that goal. For example, let's say, um, um, I'm going to go and 
do competitive research. OK, do competitive research. So I'm going to create that as a goal. Um, and so now what's happening is our AI will take that goal and create a series of action items that's appropriate to that goal in a Protomatrix project for you. The idea here is very simple. It helps you get started by creating a baseline so then you can use that baseline to actually do the work that you need to do. Because sometimes one of the hardest thing for all of us is actually to go from step zero to step one, right? And step zero is that blank slate and step one is the first task. So what our AI is doing is take you from step zero to step 10. And what it does is actually create all those tasks for you. And then you can look at them and say, you know what? That doesn't look right and you can get rid of that. Or you look, you can see another task and say, you know, that's a good idea, let me modify it, then you can do that. Um, or another one might be a task that actually is appropriate, but now you need to delegate to another person. So leverage that capability as a way to get started really quickly. And this is where, you know, the recent advancement in AI has made this, uh, has made this possible, and we're actually constantly innovating around that area. So we also have hundreds of other templates already created across all these various use cases as well. Um, and so we try our best to share that with our customers. And so if you have any feedback, definitely share with us, especially on whether these templates are helpful to you. So you see how I created that. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna click close here. Um, and now you can see that when I go back to Pretty Matrix here, it did take a few seconds to generate, but now my project is ready. I can click on open action plan and it actually takes me to the Pretty Matrix project. And within this project, it actually is using a different terminology color. Um, so you see how a, a different terminology within the quadrant, I mean, and low effort, high impact, high effort, high impact, low effort, low impact, and high effort, low impact. Again, this is now an impact effort matrix helping you identify where's the biggest bang for the buck. And so when you go and create project with Permatrix AI, we use this terminology to help you um, identify the easy wins, right? So quadrant one, again, is where you want to focus your time. That's the easy win. Um, and then these are the ones that you should plan for next. And then down here, these are things that you can actually look at for the future. So that's within the project itself. So what I've shown you is I've shown you how to create projects. I've shown you how to add tasks. I've shown you how to update the task. And I've shown you how to customize the project. Now let's step back a second and talk about some of these other challenges that we we solve with Pretty Matrix. One of the things that um, one of the reasons customers come to Pretty Matrix is prioritizing emails. What happens is that all of us get so many emails. I mean, for me personally, I get several hundred emails a day. It's extremely difficult to stay on top of that. Now I know that many of you guys are actually probably facing similar challenges. So what happens when you get an important email? You flag them, right? That's the default answer for everybody. So that's great if you have three flagged emails. What happens if you have 50 flagged emails? Which one do you answer first? Or how do you know that you need to go back and answer some of those emails? Um, do you go through your list of 50 flag emails every single day? Or what if you need to take that flag email and you need to assign to somebody? And that's a challenge that we see over and over again. So prioritizing email becomes a very fundamental capability inside Prometrix. So let me show you how that works. So when you go to Outlook, what you can do is, let's just say, um, if you have an email, well, first of all, to, to in order to access this capability, you have to install Prematrix for Outlook. So you go to the App Store and install it. Then when you get an email, so for example, I'll show you an email that I have here. Let's say I get an email, and this is an email from my, maybe my manager, maybe my customer, um, maybe some other um, uh, client or something that I need to prioritize. I can click on this ellipsis here and go down, choose party matrix and choose prioritize email. So what's going to happen is that party matrix will go and extract the information from your email, such as the subject of the email here creates a task. And then afterwards, you can decide what project does this go in. So you can see that with party matrix, we go and we again force you to organize the information that you have, including deciding on the project, which means context and then um, also the quadrant. So you can choose which quadrant it belongs in. So let me just choose quadrant four here. I can next assign this task to somebody. So when I have an email, instead of just me taking care of this email, maybe I need a coworker to, to handle it. And so you can imagine again, 
if you have if you are in sales, you get an email and now you need engineering to do some support work. You can go and take that email, prioritize it, delegate it to someone on the engineering side and say, hey, you know, this is something that we need to look at. Now, when that um, that team member opens up Protomatrix, they can see the content of the email. They can even open the email and and respond to it. But then what's nice is that you can set a due date around that, too. So now they'll get a notification that this email is going to be due within a certain date. Um, you can set reminders on top of that. And so that's where Party Matrix really shines compared to just flagging an email. It's because it allows you to add all this additional metadata, this additional context around it, and organize information. So then I get to click capture email, and that's it. It creates the task. And as you can see on the right hand side now, it opens up that same item detail that we saw earlier, right? The project name, um, the task name, I can star it and has an icon associated with it. Again, I can I can assign it to somebody else. And then if my teammate and I have to have a discussion around this email, that's what the chat section is for. So now you and your coworkers can actually discuss about this email. And then maybe some of the things, some of the things you have to do might be to create a presentation or update on presentation. Well, guess what? That's where the resources section comes in and you can attach links to your SharePoints, your Google Docs, or even upload the documents themselves. So you can think of Party Matrix again as that one central place where you're taking an email, you're putting it to the, the proper context along with everything else. And the fact that you're using due dates and reminders makes it so that everyone knows what they need to work on. And the fact that you put it again in quadrant one or quadrant two um, allows everyone to understand that this is something that's high priority. So that's what happens with an email. But here's the next catch to it. Again, let's just say you get an email and um, you already flagged the previous email, right? Because it's it was very important. Now this email is a follow-up. So then imagine you flag that too. Well, now you're gonna get very confused because now you have two flags emails within the same context. So what Protomatrix allows you to do is if you get an email, you can actually go and click on this ellipsis and instead of prioritizing the email, you can open up Protomatrix and attach the email to an existing task. And so you can see now, instead of instead of just actually prioritizing this as a brand new task, I can hover over the Protomatrix task and attach it. So now imagine I have multiple emails. I can actually keep it organized in one central place. Um, and especially you have follow up with customers or you might have other emails that are not um, directly from the same person and put in one central place. In fact, one of the capabilities that we have is that if you and multiple team members are using Protomatrix and someone sends you an email and CC both of you, when you create a task from it, Protomatrix will cat capture that. And then when your coworker goes in and, and opens that same email that they're CC'd on, they can actually see that, hey, this email might have already been prioritized, so you don't have to prioritize again. So that's something that is completely not possible in any of your email management software and is possible only with the Protomatrix um, Outlook extension. So now you can see how Protomatrix create one central place to have all the emails organized. Now let's jump over to Microsoft Teams. The reason I want to do that is because we talk about context switching, right? Um, now I know that you know a lot of you are probably using so many different software at any point in time, and Microsoft Teams is getting really popular, especially at at enterprises and so forth. We use it within our organization. Um, so while Protomatrix works completely outside of Teams, everything that you can do, if you do use Microsoft Teams, we do add several capabilities that are worthwhile to mention. If you use Microsoft Teams, definitely install Protomatrix. So go to the App Store, install Protomatrix, and then one thing I would like you to do is right-click on here and pin it. So when you pin it, it's very easy to access Protomatrix. And so you can see how when I go to here, the interface looks exactly the same as the web app. The only difference is the menu is hidden here. But this is now the next part about how we integrate into Teams. So if you go to the chat section here, one of the things you can do in Protomatrix is add tabs inside Teams. So for example, when I have a coworker inside Teams, I can add what's called the one-on-one. -on -one. The way the one-on-one -on -one works is it actually it does, it flips the whole Protomatrix around and instead of putting in the context of project, we put in the context of people. So what this tab will do is it pulls up all the action items you have with your coworker across all of your pretty matrix. So imagine if this was your direct report. How hard is it for you today to find out what are the status of all the work you have to do with somebody else? Just think about that for a second. And imagine if you have to go and look at the list with your manager and then the list of like your five or six direct reports or some of the coworkers that you work with closely. 
So with Pretty Matrix, when you go to the one-on-one, -on -one, instead of having to go through each project and then you know clicking through the details and see what are the things that you guys work on together, it goes and grabs all of those tasks and shows it you right here. And it shows any tasks where you are both followers and or owner or delegated to. This place is extremely easy to see everything that's overdue. And when you're having that one-on-one -on -one meeting and you just open this up, you can click through all the different tasks that you have, talk about it, reprioritize it as needed, change due date as needed. And then not only that, you can add share tasks very easily too. So you don't even have to leave Party Matrix. I'm sorry, you don't even have to leave this tab to create share tasks. So you can see when I click on share tasks, you can assign that to your coworker directly from here. Again, use natural language to set due date. It assigns to the person, it adds you as a follower. So when this task gets updated, you get a notification. Um, and then down here, you can choose what project it belongs in. So I really highly recommend this if you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings and you're always doing status reports on the tasks that you're working on. What I like about this view too is that if there are any tasks that are overdue, it turns red. And so you can actually sort each of these and see what are the tasks that are overdue um, or what are the tasks that's due, you know, due soon, et cetera, and easily talk through them and um, and update them as needed and modified is essentially any any information around the task that's been changed right such as you know someone changed the due date someone updated the chat etc so i really recommend um, this one-on-one -on -one if you use microsoft teams the way to add that is you click on this plus and then choose pretty matrix and then choose the one-on-one -on -one here um, a second view you can add is what's called a full project view so let's just say if you share a project with another person and you're always working on things within that project, you can also add this tab. The reason you do that is then when you're in a chat with somebody, you don't even have to open Pretty Matrix. You can just go to this view to see the appropriate projects. But beyond that, what we allow you to do too is actually take any conversation that you have with somebody and turn that into a chat, into a task itself. So let me give you a use case. Let's just say you're talking to your manager and then uh, your manager say, hey, could you do X, Y, Z, right? Now, in a traditional way, um, you would have to go open up Proto Matrix, go find a project, create the task, invite your manager, et cetera. So instead, you can just hover over this chat, click on this ellipsis, and create PM item. So what happens now is that a task is created. You can choose the project, you can choose the quadrant, you can set a due date. But here's the next part. Proto Matrix will link back to this moment in time when you have this conversation in Teams. So let me give you an example. Let's say you and your manager are talking about three or four different things, and then you create a task in Pretty Matrix. And then six months later, you're looking at it and you're like, wait a minute, what were the things we were talking about? What was all this context, right? Because all you have is the task name. Well, Pretty Matrix linked back, so then you can click on this link here. It takes back you, uh, it takes you back to Teams and it shows you everything that you uh, talked about during that time. So very helpful way to review your messages. One of the other things you can do is imagine if you delegate a task to somebody in, in Microsoft, um, in Proto Matrix, and now you know you didn't see them respond. In Microsoft Teams, you can actually open up Proto Matrix here and then send any task that you have um, into as an action card in Teams. This allows them to easily view the item, and this is a great way to get a, a give them a gentle reminder that they need to look at the task. We also have multiple other capabilities inside Proto Matrix, including integration with your meetings. So if you have a meeting, let's say inside Teams again, um, one of the things you can do is actually, let's just say you have a meeting, okay? Um, one of the things you can do is create a task, create that meeting inside Microsoft Teams, but you're also able to go and attach Party Matrix as a tab as well. And so when you do that, what Party Matrix will do is they'll bring up all the action items um, that's relevant between the team members who's in this meeting. And so that allows you to go and take any Party Matrix task and create an agenda out of it. And then as you're in the meeting itself, you can actually create Party Matrix tasks directly from your meeting notes. So that's a really powerful capability and a powerful integrations inside Teams, um, Teams meeting. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this and the reason we do any of these things is all about reducing context switching for you. Uh, because I know at the end of the day, we're just spending too much time 
across all these different apps. And, and what happens is it's really distracting if you have to switch context just to create a simple task. And so keep that in mind with Protomatrix. So with that, I'm actually going to go back to Protomatrix to tell you a couple more things um, that might be useful as you go through your journey with Protomatrix. Now, as I mentioned earlier, let me just choose another project here. Um, you can see within this project that I have, again, series of tasks. Um, and I talked about the, the matrix view quite often. But up here, if you go to the middle section, you can actually switch views of all your data as well. So I can go to the list view. And the list view takes all the tasks and write it down in the list. Um, and you still have the matrix, the quadrants here, so you can sort it. But so this is very easy to, to organize and, and group them. And then you can still create tasks directly from here. So the reason we have this is some people prefer the list view um, as long as they understand that these are these tasks are prioritized in different ways. What I like about the list view is the ability to see due dates really easily. So as you can see here, when I'm in the list view, I can actually sort by due dates. And then all the tasks that are overdue also turn red. So then it allows me to easily identify tasks that need to be worked on. Um, and then from there, either I mark them as done or I delegate them to somebody else or I, re, uh, I change the due dates. And so that's one of the things, again, I recommend doing, which is keep an eye out on the um, on your due dates and make sure that you actually work on these action items. And then you have the calendar view. Now, the way the calendar view works is any task that has due dates would show up in the calendar view, right? And then from the calendar view, you can actually drag things around directly from this calendar interface. Now, the reason we have this is that, again, sometimes you want to see within the bigger picture, what are the things I have to work on this week? What are the things I have to work on next week? And it's very visual. Um, as you can imagine, a list view doesn't help you with that. And the matrix view helps you understand priorities, but it doesn't help you understand what your next week would look like. And then beyond that, you have the Gantt chart. So the way the Gantt chart works is this. So let me show you how it works. So what the Gantt chart does is it takes all your action items that have due dates and it actually displayed on a timeline view. So the way Proto Matrix works is actually you can go and you can link tasks together. So when you choose a task in Proto Matrix, going back to the resource section here, I mentioned how you can link files and emails. Well, guess what? You can link Proto Matrix action items as well. So if I go to here, what I can do is um, I can link an existing item and now I can choose another action item in Proto Matrix and I can set it so then I can say that this task is blocked by another task, or this task blocks another task, or this task is caused by another task, or this task is causes another task. So you can play with that to see how it all links together, but um, this is a useful way to create dependencies within the matrix. And the way the Gantt chart works is it's intended to be super easy for you to build this. You don't have to do any tweaking or whatever. You just create action items in the matrix as long as you set due dates. Our system will build its scan chart for you, um, again, just as a very simple way to see the timeline of how things look in the future. This is very helpful if you want to look at months in advance. So you can see how here I can zoom out and I can see, you know, April, May, all the way to October, November, et cetera. Um, so what happens with the calendar view is it's good for seeing things that are within a month or a week, but it doesn't give you the even bigger picture of how things look much further down the road. So if you have a very complex project with due dates that's really far out, the timeline view is helpful for that. So one of the things I do want to mention is how you invite other people to your project. So earlier, um, I showed you how you can get to the project details. If you click on this edit here and you go to the project details, this is where you can invite team members. I want to give you a quick note on how permissions work. What happens with Protomatrix is if the project is only for you, then you're the only person who can see it. Um, but then if you invite somebody else to the project, they get full access to the project itself too. That means they can edit tasks, they can create tasks, et cetera. But remember, Protomatrix create a record of all those changes. So don't worry about, you know, we, we see customers getting worried about um, how, you know, other people are making changes and so forth and they don't know what's going on. Well, Protomatrix track all those changes. So definitely you can go and, you know, talk to your team members to ensure that you know, people are making changes that they only should be. But at least if they do, you have a record of all of that. But that's how permission works. If you want to read, you share them a read-only version of Protomatrix of that matrix, you can go to here and then choose 
share project in read-only mode. So in that case, they can take a look at the project, but they can't modify it. Additionally, what you can do is you can also delegate a task to a person who's not in the project. And so that allows them to see the task, but only that task um, and not the rest of the matrix. So those are the various ways to handle permissions within per matrix. But I do want to mention that. So one of the things that I highly recommend everyone does is one, create a personal project, and then two, create a project with your team. And so in that team project, that's where you have one central place to track all the priorities that you have. And then the other view you want to look at in Pretty Matrix is what's called the home view. And so this is the last thing that I'll show um, in today's webinar within the, the product itself. When you go to the home view, this is where you start your day. So for me personally, when I open up Pretty Matrix, I go to the home view and I look at my alerts. The way the alert works is the following. Whenever there's a task that you're in or delegated to and there's been an update, it shows up here. So you can think of this as your attention needed, right? And then as you click through each of these tasks, this list goes down. So you see how I can choose this task and now it's 108. I can choose this task, now it's 107. And so it allows me to go down the list. And then afterwards, um, once I'm at zero, then I know I've looked at every task that required my attention. Now, of course, you know, maybe that list will get really, really stale or you've, you know, built up a lot of notifications that you want to clear. You go ahead up here and clear all notifications. And this is where the due dates and this is where the reminders really help. Um, so when I have a task, I always set again that daily reminders or weekly reminders. So then when I clear this list, um, the next day or the next week, I'll get reminded again on the tasks that are really important. And again, it's just all about resurfacing it up um, so then it's top of mind. Anyways, this is one good place for you to get started. So if you were using Prematrix with other team members, this is how you know whether or not there's been changes um, to the task that you should care about. And then the other sections is just the agenda, which is where you see all the tasks that you have that's relevant to you, but for the next week. And then uh, with that, I'm actually going to go back to the presentation. So. One of the things I want to talk about is that, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what the software can do or cannot do, it's up to you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think, you know, we'll talk about the value of Party Matrix in a team, but it starts with the individual. Um, if Party Matrix can help you personally understand your priorities, just write things down, get it out of your head, so then you have a clear mind and a, a better picture of how you should be spending your time then I think you'll see that value. And then um, you'll get icing on the cake by being able to share those priorities with your coworkers. If you do use Microsoft Teams and Outlook, I do recommend installing those extensions. It is not required to use Party Matrix. Then the next thing that I recommend for anyone who's new to Party Matrix is that create a project for personal priorities, create a project for shared team priorities, and then create a project for a key initiative. When I talk about key initiative, it's essentially a project on a goal that you really care about, right? It could be getting a promotion. It could be, um, you know, hitting some metrics for your organization, et cetera. But the reason you want to do that is because those are typically the thing that you should be spending your time on. And if you use part of matrix to track that, you'll be able to see your value really quickly. And then if you invite other team members, make sure you pitch to them on why it's important to use Protomatrix um, in order to help you guys focus on the high impact task. Again, if you use a task management software and then there are so many out there or you share a to-do list or whatever, that's great. You know, you know what to do. The difference with Protomatrix is you need to know what you need to do within the context of importance and urgency, right? So not everything that we do is valuable. And that's the thing. You know, we don't have time to do everything. We can only do a smaller number of tasks within the bigger picture. So then you have to really decide what has the biggest impact. And that is where Party Matrix is different from everything else. When you create tasks in Party Matrix, I highly recommend due dates. I highly recommend that you put tasks in the appropriate quadrants, set reminders, and then check your home view when you do get reminders, when you do have those tasks. If you're done with them, mark them as done. Later on, you can actually run reports um, with Party Matrix to see 
you know, how well you've done on various months or quarters. And then not only that, you can, when you have due dates and so forth, you can see how overloaded your team members are. Um, so then you don't delegate them, over delegate them, et cetera. And then of course, ruthlessly prioritize. As the saying go, you know, if everything's important and urgent, then nothing is. Um, and then if you don't understand, if you don't prioritize yourself then your time, then somebody else will prioritize your time for you. So a couple of advice, try to use Protomatrix to track high impact tasks. This is where it gets really tricky because sometimes some customers will get so excited that they actually start tracking the nitty gritty, really small stuff, which is fine. But just keep in mind that if you use it within the team and you're communicating the tasks with other team members, when you track high impact tasks, then you see more value. So when we talk about, you know, the biggest bang for the buck, Party Matrix is very helpful to understand the goals. Always think of Party Matrix as a communication tool. Um, and don't think of it as a project management software. It's a communication tool between you and others so that everyone's on the same page. And then if you have individual goals, use Party Matrix to tackle those individuals. So what success with Protomatrix should look like? You have one central place to track priorities. So then if you ever, you and your team members ever have a question of, hey, what is it that we should be working on? You sh your default should be look at Protomatrix and say, wait a minute, these are the things in quadrant one. These are the things we've agreed to work on, right? And if we disagree, that's okay. You reprioritize Protomatrix, but you wanna make sure that Protomatrix is always the single source of truth with respect to priorities. And then that everyone's on the team are aligned on the key task. And this is where um, one of the things that I've seen really successful customers do is they project Protomatrix on the big screen. When you have that meeting in the conference room, you project Protomatrix on the big screen, you go through the list. And when you have all those people in one central place, you realize that you can actually focus on just talking about the things in quadrant one and you can ignore the rest. And suddenly your time in a meeting is so much more productive because people spend so much time talking about things that don't matter. If you have tasks that are repetitive, make sure you use your templates. The templates is really helpful to go and build out your action items, share that with your team members, so then everyone who's using the same process can just leverage that really easily. And then of course, prioritize your email. I showed you the Outlook integration, but we also have Gmail integration, and also every single person who uses Protomatrix has an inbox. So what that means is that if you use Protomatrix um, and you have a task that comes in by, you have something that comes in by email and you need to set a reminder, you can click forward into your Protomatrix inbox and it will automatically create a task for you in Protomatrix. Um, in fact, every project and every quadrant in Protomatrix has an email address. So what that allows you to even do is you can actually forward specific emails to specific projects. Um, you can even create automatic rules so then every email from a certain customer will always go into their matrix. So those are, you know, essentially, we can go down the rabbit hole there, but essentially that's one way you can look at pre-matrix as uh, to keep all that information organized. And with that, I conclude my presentation. If there's any questions whatsoever, please send in the chat and I'll try my best to address them right now. Um, I see someone said no sound, so um, I don't know if I hope that's just you, but we'll send this recording afterwards and hopefully you can take a look at it and see if um, you're able to hear it afterwards. Are there any other questions? Thank you for the feedback. Uh, so. As mentioned, we do have a couple of recordings that talk about sort of similar topics as well. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out to us. Uh, we actually are working on guides for specific job titles and job functions in your industry. So if you are struggling with Protomatrix or you're looking for tips on using Protomatrix for specific uh, purposes, reach out to us and we can provide you that guide. Uh, the question is integrations with Teams and Outlook free or need licenses. Protomatrix has a free tier of five projects, 100 tasks, and up to five collaborators. So if you're using under those threshold, you can use Protomatrix for free. All our integrations are included in that. If you do have licenses of Protomatrix um, for, for yourself or your organization, it includes all of our integrations as well. So, so either you have a free tier or you have a license. You do not need separate licenses for each product. You just have one central license.
Uh, so we actually have an API. I believe it's, so let me see if I can pull up quickly here what some of the other integrations that we have here. So if you go to um, to our connectors here, you can see that we have some integrations with Outlook Calendar, Planner, To Do, Azure DevOps, Zoom, Zendesk, and then Jira as well. Um, so the way these integrations work is Party Matrix will pull in action items from these other services into various projects in Party Matrix. It's not intended to be a two-way sync, but it's intended to be one central place so you can see how all these other things um, work. If you do use Zendesk, our integration with Zendesk is, is pretty powerful um, because it allows you to take any Zendesk ticket and actually automatically create Party Matrix action items in it for you. So then you can actually delegate it to other people. That's one of the capabilities that Zendesk really misses. Um, and so Pretty Matrix makes that customer management really helpful for those who are using it for um, ticket management. Thank you for these questions. Are there any more? Fantastic. Well, so my name is Hi. My email is hi at affluence.com. So if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, and again, as I mentioned, uh, you know, with for your specific job function, your specific use cases, reach out to us if you need help with that, and we'll try to provide you some uh, guides and documentation on that. And then, you know, if your team is struggling with various challenges, that's also a perfect place for us to um, provide you feedback on how to best leverage Party Matrix. At the end of the day, it's a very flexible tool. Uh, just remember that it's a communication tool. It's a prioritization prioritization tool. So use that for those purposes. Uh, and I think that you know success with Party Matrix is pretty straightforward if you're able to go and communicate to others what your priorities are and then find those mismatches. Um, and so hopefully you'll get value out of this and hopefully you become more effective and efficient with Party Matrix. Thank you for your time.